poor post uh, Fourth of July got real bumpy out here. I I didn't feel any of them. There have been like these small quakes just in like the South Fontana area that are just very very small little quakes. We've been getting those for like a couple weeks now, and like I said, they're just small like sub three point oh uh, earthquakes. But they're just like you know within a mile of here so it's like they you feel them you really feel them and then further out nobody feels them and then when the big ones hit uh like the 6.4 and the, the 7.1 was it the biggest biggest one mm. i didn't feel those at all so just i didn't feel those at all so it's my it's dad bizarre. lives out in palm desert and he felt them i can't explain it I, i'm i'm very sensitive <laughs> to to the earthquakes when feeling them and i didn't feel the biggest earthquake that we've had in california in 20 something years yeah it's so strange well it's also like depends on the direction that the waves are going so it's going to be stronger in one direction if you're like on the opposite side of where they're heading maybe you don't feel it as much well i'll tell you as far as the small ones go that we've, we've been feeling out here um I always figure it's better for the Earth to be releasing that tension in small little bursts. Instead of one big one. Yes. So that was the optimistic feeling about that. I'd rather deal with the, these little tiny tremors on a daily basis than have like some world-ending apocalypse earthquake. <laughs> like the San Francisco me, like, quake? Break all my shit. How yeah, strong was the San Francisco nice. quake, anyway? I want to say it was a 7-something. I think at some point I knew what it was, but it must have been a 7. I don't think it was an 8. I don't think... I, I don't know if there's... I think the 8s that have been recorded in history, they, they luckily they were all in the ocean, for the most part. Except for those some... unlucky enough to get by, hit by a tsunami afterwards. Right. Yeah. Like, whatever one that caused that, like, Fukushima, you know, yeah. meltdown, I think that might have been an 8, but it was, it, like... That, that was pretty high up there. Was it was either an 8 or a 9. Well, so while we're on the topic of earthquakes, uh, I believe Ash wanted to talk about preparedness and stuff. Yeah, so I just wanted to bring up that even if you're in an area that doesn't necessarily get them but they still have the potential to happen. You should be prepared no matter what. Um, and there's a lot of kits out there that exist that you can buy and they're already pre-built and they have a backpack and all that stuff. Um, definitely read everything if you're gonna opt for that, but I suggest to build your own, um, some basic stuff, just water. You could actually get canned water um there's a really good site i think it's just like emergency.com or something like that um but you can get canned water that lasts for like 50 years you can get packaged food um uh, make sure you have first aid you, kits. you could also get a uh large metal canteen as well that way you can b use it to boil water if you need to as well yeah exactly at the minimum like a metal cup of some sorts in case you ever need to boil your water um, some extra clothes, just have a prepared bag of your own to throw all this stuff in. I mean, duct tape doesn't hurt. Um, definitely a can opener if you do have canned food. Um, a and towel if and it can double needs... as a blanket. Yeah. Can, canned food is about one third the price of freeze dried food. So keep that in mind when you're. You, you probably already have canned food around the yeah. place. So it's Basically, you want stuff like canned fruits and veggies, uh, mm -hmm. canned meat, like corned beef hash, or even Spam would be good to bring along for protein. Um, canned mushrooms, can like, they, yeah. You, you don't want, like, canned soup or anything, especially if it's a condensed soup, because that would be a high salt intake. Which, yeah, which requires more water. So if you're yes. limited on water, you definitely want to stay away from salt. It's sodium. like people that go camping, they're like already prepared for this kind of shit. Yeah, and it's like uh, no, no, no. <laughs> people, people. this isn't for Basically. people like people like us who probably have 
supplies and such. Yeah. Like, if REI is your favorite store, maybe this isn't for you and you're already prepared. <laughs> but... Canned, um, so, yeah, let's, like, canned food over, re over uh, dehydrated food and stuff like that. Especially since, you yeah. know, you need water to rehydrate your dehydrated food. Keep that in mind as well. Um, yes. They do sell prepackaged food. It's emergency food. MREs. There's also survival bars, which are high-calorie... Basically, uh, mm -hmm. granola bar stuff. But read it. Like, read all this stuff before you buy it, because there are some that they say it's just good to go, but then really you have to boil it. You have to somehow heat it. So if that's not an option. Most MREs do have a uh, heat heat pack that that's water-activated, but it does actually do the job f quite well. Like, mm -hmm. not, not really, really well. But it, it'll uh, get, allow you to have a hot meal. Yeah. So just be prepared. Have a plan. Have something. Because it's, I mean, you never know. And it, like, God forbid, we never have to use it. But just be prepared. Uh, one more thing would definitely be a, a uh, first aid kit. Um, yeah. Don't, don't, don't be too cheap with these. Because the, the, if, if you ever need to use it in a situation like this, it might save your life. Yeah, and if you're already someone who's on medication, make sure your prescriptions and stuff are in a central area. You don't have to scatter and try and figure out where everything is. Or keep like a, a week or so's set aside. Mm -hmm. Like a week's you worth know, of medicine just set aside so that you have it if, if you need it. You know, with all these hurricanes we've been getting rocked with the United States the last couple of years. I've been seeing stuff on like these, what would you call them? Just, I want to just call them balloons, but you would just like stick it into your tub and you could just like have a water supply. If, if you had a couple hours notice. Yeah. Fill it up with tap, tap water. water. Yeah. So, something like that. That's something that just wouldn't be a, a use case here in Southern California, typically. But I guess in like any place where the hurricanes are com coming every year, I gotta tell you, it's living in Southern California. There's really no natural disasters, but there's always just that chance of the big one happening. That's that's the only like. Uh, there's fire season out here as well. <laughs> yeah, well, fire season is definitely a thing in California. The thing is yep. that you have to live someplace where shit could catch fire. Like places where there's mudslides, there's fire. Every year. There, every, <laughs> yep. Every place where there's mudslides, there's fire. There's like a cycle of that happening. And then places that don't get floods and don't get fires, it's like nothing ever happens there. Well, but that's because what happens is you get a burst of rain and it restores life to the area but then it doesn't get rain again for a while so all that new fresh greenery dies and creates shrubbery dead dried shrubbery which lights fire easily mm -hmm. we get the santa ana winds super strong and they just all the friction all the dead stuff just very flammable <laughs> dry lightning is a thing and lightning storms are definitely a thing out in California too.